Happy Tuesday, everybody. February 4th. It is so nice to have you with us here live on Houston Life. I know, I we're back. Oh, we are back. We haven't been on the air since January 17th. We were on Facebook Live. Yes. But that's a little different. It than is a little TV. different, but we are back. I'm so glad. <laughs> We're so glad. And honestly, it was so great hearing from so many of you texting, emailing, writing into us. So many of you asked when we would be back on the air. And honestly, we had no idea. Every Very single true. day during these impeachment proceedings, we've had a show ready to go. We've had guests here. Tex has been doing his thing. Uh, but unfortunately, we've been preempted for so long. But it's... It's good to be back. It is good to be back. A lot has, has happened. We've missed you all, um, but hopefully you've ca caught up with us on, you know, social media and all kinds of fun stuff. I do have something really cool happening um, on Thursday, and I would love for you all to join us. Derek, you're coming, I'll right? I'll be there. Bunch of the staff, they're going to be there as well, and we're doing a big party at Kendra Scott at Rice Village, and all of this will benefit Girls on the Run. There's my friend, Kendra, right there. Uh, that was when that. I interviewed her when she was back in town um, about a year ago. Did you plan your matching outfits? I know. We didn't, but that necklace is the very first piece that I ever purchased of Kendra Scott before a boutique was ever opened here in Houston, and uh, that's an OG piece. She, wow. she was dying over it. And but now she's blown up. She is blown up, so we're going to do from 6 to 8. It's a My Favorite Things party but again all of this will benefit that evening girls on the run inc houston and which is a great organization we featured them here yeah. so it's a running club for for girls but also empowerment anti-bullying there's so many great things but they need more and more coaches more volunteers so the money that we raise on thursday night will go directly to them to help fund and help more girls in the houston area that is really cool yeah. and if you spend a minimum amount you get a little gift bag right absolutely all of the info is on my KPRC2, Courtney Zavala Facebook page. So head over there. You can RSVP. There's going to be tons of food and little drinks. Champagne? You'll be there. There'll be some bubbles. Oh, okay. My favorite thing. I mean, Courtney can't throw a party without bubbles. Who are we kidding, right? I can't function. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, great, Courtney. I'm yeah, glad you're doing so that. I'm and super it's all excited. for a great cause. Yeah. I'll see you there on Thursday night. Absolutely. Hopefully the weather will hold. How about the weather over the weekend, by the way? It was gorgeous. Guys, it was like being on vacation in our own city. So it nice to be outside so awesome. all Day long. Yeah, it was a great weekend to get a puppy. Oh, yeah, you got a puppy. Yes. Wow, so much has happened. So much has Guys, happened. So, Courtney and her family, you just adopted what? He's a doodle? A golden doodle. A golden doodle. His name is Oscar. Yes. How, we, how many weeks old? Nine. He's nine weeks old. So, cute as can be. Still barks at his shadow, ch chases his tail. Oh, my yeah, gosh. Lots of loves and hugs and kisses. Has happening. he chewed up any shoes yet? Not yet. Not yet. That's mm -hmm. because Stephanie Benefit. Or Bennett, Bennett, sorry. <laughs> I'm hearing voices in my ear. <laughs> we'll get to the click double. Well, Stephanie Bennett with Believe in Dog uh, came over and she helped you start training him, Totally right? helped prepare us for what to expect. And then uh, she popped over yesterday, did a little puppy, um, you know, first sesh with him. So... Yeah, a things well are good. A well-trained dog is, is worth having. Tex has been, I don't know, I think kind of in a strange mood this week. We did one of those doggy DNA tests. Uh -huh. Have you guys heard of these? Of course, we've heard of the test for humans, right? Right. But when we first went to the Houston SPCA, I think that was September of 2018, I first laid eyes on this little man. The shelter uh, told us that he was a Maltese and a poodle mix, a Maltipoo. And many right. of you have, have asked us, and that's just what we've always we said. We just went with it. Well, it turns out we were lying. Comple we were wrong. We had no, we were given bad information. Bad info. We're the victims here, right? Yes. But <laughs> to try to get to the bottom of what Tex actually is or to confirm his heritage, we did one of these tests, or should I say Dr. Hennessy did the test for us. You're going to see her in just a moment. But there's our Click to Vote poll that's up on your screen right now, and we would love it if you all would weigh in on what you think is the you know dominant breed or, or any sort of breeds that make up part of his DNA. I mean, I think there's got to be Maltese in him. I don't know. I don't know at all what these results are. I haven't seen it. Don't know. Well, there could be any combination. Right? Yeah. I mean, I mean I could definitely see... not Dalmatian. Well, I don't see do, that. But how do you know? I don't know. I'm just looking at him. He doesn't look like a Dalmatian. But I don't think a dog necessarily has to look like yeah. a dog to have its. I mean, he could have like 10% Dalmatian. Right. And he'd still probably look the same. Oh, little sleepy oh, baby. He was, I can't he was wait really to see funny. that. 
Yeah, he growled at me yesterday when I tried to uh, take the paper away from him. Anyway, we're going to get to that in <laughs> just a bit. But we do have a great show coming up for you today. We're going to meet someone named Romeo Robinson, shining the spotlight on this contemporary artist. He's making waves in the Houston art scene, using his paintings to showcase the hopes and fears of African Americans. And I can't wait for you to see some of his work. Well, there's a piece right there. Amazing. Look at that. Absolutely. So beautiful. And also coming up, guys, Rodeo Houston announces the last entertainment for this year's lineup. Lauren Kelly is going to be live on our Facebook page for the big reveal. You know, Lizzo confirmed now for oh, March yeah. 13th, Marshmello on March 20th. So get your phones and tablets ready. The announcement should happen in about 25 minutes. We're told at about 1.30. Marshmello's amazing. My kids love him. So you're a big Marshmello yeah. fan. Yeah. Oh, he does lots of collabs and he's featured on a lot, a lot of songs. You probably would know more songs than you think you would. Selena Gomez, Justin Could you Bieber. Sing one? Like, is there one that comes to mind? Oh, I'm not good with remembering things. You just don't like to, to like, sing on live TV, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm it? not a good singer. No, I know there are a lot of big Marshmallow fans in the building. I mean, sometimes, I told you this during the Grammys, sometimes I watch these award shows or I hear about new music. Yeah. Well, I I'm going to tell I, I you, no you know more songs are. than you think you do. Just okay. because he's he collabs on a lot of different things. So, yeah, you, it, it, you wouldn't even know he was part of that song. Okay. Yeah. Well, hopefully we can get tickets. We should make a little uh, TV husband and wife date night out of it. Let's do it. Rodeo Houston, Marshmallow. Love it. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Well, folks, we mentioned that when we adopted Little Tex from a local shelter, we thought he was a mix between a Maltese and a Poodle, right? So just to confirm that, thanks to these DNA doggy testing kits, we thought we would set out to confirm his ancestry. Yes, we need to know. Those kits are becoming more and more popular. And here with more on how they work and to reveal Texas DNA results, we welcome back Dr. Jennifer Hennessy with Animal ER of Northwest Houston. Good Great morning. to see you. you too. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New Year. Oh, my gosh. Right. Happy February yes, already. I know. Okay, so this is really interesting. The doggy DNA testing kits. We have done the human ones, right? I haven't. You, oh, you yeah, haven't? Yeah. I did it with Ancestry. But this is a thing that is actually accurate for pets? It is. It's not a perfect science, which is the same as for you and I, but it all stems from a database. So these companies have a data of genetic DNA, which basically is the map of what goes on and makes him him or you and I us. Um, and then from there, we can kind of match and compare patterns to see where all that patterning came from, which is how we track things backwards. And is it the same thing, a swab test, basically? Is it the same that we would do? It is. His was a swab, which is definitely pain-free, but he didn't enjoy it too much. He um, didn't? Oh. No. He had his own opinion, but it's a non painful way to really gain that sample. You can also do blood testing as well. Interesting. Okay, so while a dog may not enjoy it, how long does the process actually last? This was two swabs and literally it was a couple minutes. It was more of him being able to sustain just the tickling. Sure. It goes on in the mouth, which innately their habit is to get rid of that because it feels di you know, different and funny. Yeah. So it's more of just kind of a family moment where right. everybody gets to put their hands on their pet and you know gather that sample, but it's fairly quick and easy. And then the testing is only two weeks to three weeks, which okay. is really fast as well. So a quick turnaround. And I understand yeah. why we would want to do this. Uh, I have friends who, who uh, had been adopted and so they didn't know their birth parents, oh, yeah. and so to get a better idea. But when we adopt pets or we find a pet, we don't know exactly what we're getting. So the same sort of answer is the reason why we want to know these questions, plus health benefits, right? For sure. I mean, it's a bit of a mystery, just like when he came from the shelter or if you rescue. But even if you get a puppy and you think, like, I have, like, what we think is maybe a lab cross, she's not. We did the same genetic test for her, too. Um, so it's more of discovering of what's underneath all the fluff and where those genes came from, which helps you map their personality and if they're high energy or if they're low key, maybe like texts, but even other inherent traits such as disease issues too. Well, yeah, and I think that's really interesting, the risks associated yeah. with, you know, what their DNA might be. Yes. But also I think the curiosity factor is a big one for a lot of pet owners because you yes. want to know. I'm where sure that's your probably number from. one. I sure. think from the veterinary angle and the medical preferences, I would love to know more about what makes them them because that helps me as well put my finger even more close to maybe some diseases or risks I should be on on point and worried about, but also I might need to discuss with that family. And especially if it's a puppy, you may not really realize what you're getting into. You might not know <laughs> if it's going to get to be big. A hundred pounds. Yes. Yes. Oh, it'll be five pounds a hundred yeah. pounds later. Surprise. Um, but from their personalities can be surprises and quite a handful to manage. So understanding some of the stem of who they are helps you also kind of 
cope maybe with some of that high energy or some of the tendencies they might need to have their release, whether they need a lot of extra socialization or energy outlets too. And Dr. Hennessy, what are we talking price-wise for one of these tests for animals? I'd say it's moderate in pricing. It's definitely, I'd say, in the ballpark of 80 to 150 for okay. the majority of tests, which is reasonable. Now, if you have bigger expenses or other medical things, sure. I'd advise families to spend money on the medical care, but the additional information for about 100 bucks on average is really going to supply kind of almost like a crystal ball or a glance into their future, which potentially could strengthen your foundation and your bond with your animal knowing who they are and why they are, but also on my side, understanding maybe where things might change mm -hmm. as they continue to age. Okay. Very interesting. Well, I think we're going to fit in a quick commercial break now, but coming up next, we will make the big reveal of Texas <laughs> DNA results. He's excited, folks. He's just sleepy. We'll be right back. <laughs> Dr. Jennifer Hennessy with Animal ER of Northwest Houston, who's about to reveal Texas DNA results. And what's the company? Um, people have been asking where they can find these kits. Um, the one that we used for Tex and who supplied for us is from Wisdom Health. And so it's the Wisdom panel for DNA testing. Um, super easy to use and you can just access online. And they're actually running a special today as well at the end for Puppy Bowl. So you can get $20 off, which might be a good Valentine gift. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> now we did have everybody uh, who's watching, join along with us on clicktovote.com. And right now, 54% think he is a Maltese. There's Maltese that's part of him. I kind of agree, but I'm, I'm like dying to know. It is on my card and I have not looked. So Good. literally, I'm totally surprised. You are? Yeah. Okay, are you guys ready? We're ready, let's we're do ready. it. And, but before you oh. tell us, doctor, a what? Yeah, were we going to show the video of him getting swabbed or no? Oh, we can. I mean, yeah. we can talk about that process. While we show that video, though, were you surprised by Texas results? Partially. I'd say probably 25% his genetics. I'm really surprised, and I wouldn't have guessed and picked that breed, so yes. Okay, interesting. And that's the fun of it. Yeah. And this is the part where you said, I don't like discovery. this. <laughs> yeah, he's like, not into it. Yeah. Tex does have a very great temperament, though, and it's interesting how a breed can inform the way your dog's temperament comes out, really. Very much, and his definitely his whole little genetic profile kind of pinned why he's so obedient, why he's so accommodating, but very social, and pretty much like a person with just a nice little long fuzzy body. So, it, yeah. yeah. Okay, like we ready? Person. I think we're ready. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. All right, so he's 25% Chihuahua. Chihuahua? Chihuahua. Yes. He is 25% Miniature Poodle. Okay. He is a little over 12% Westy, which kind of goes with some of his facial fluff. Oh, the West. Yeah. Don't be afraid of this scary music. Don't and a little over 37% is a mixture breeds, which basically means that his genetics are so mixed beyond three generations, the test really can't pinpoint a specific one. Um, okay. So maybe Maltese is in that background because he does right. have a companion breed in that component. So there's quite possibly there's a tincture of some Maltese in him, but primarily he's a Poochie instead of a Maltipoo. A Poochie? A Poochie. Yes. Like a Poodle Chihuahua. Yes. Oh, hi, Poochie. <laughs> hi. He's like, guys, I'm still the same dog. He says, thank you. Now you can get it. I know. Oh, nice? my word. I would have never in a million said Chihuahua. Yes. Never. That was a surprise for me as well. They are intelligent, and they're definitely small in stature, so I can see it, but I wouldn't have guessed it. Hi, buddy. Hi, right. buddy. And I think we actually have a photo of Texas family tree. Yes. How did this happen? It's the same as you did your Ancestry.com, where they kind of line up. So the family tree primarily are his breeds. Oh, I that see. That they trace. And they do this again by patterning, and they match the patterns of his gene strands to see whose DNA matches most so that they can line up which is the most likely top breed matching that pattern. And these are some of the traits then, right? Yeah, and they were, for, for the most part, spot on. They definitely found one gene from the curly hair gene side. And since he had one, they discovered he would have wavy hair, which he did. Then they had no picture, no any information about him. Um, they also found that he would have a white coat, which was accurate, and a black nose, which is accurate. Aww. And then as well, that he would have facial, what they call furnishings or fluff around the face, which uh, right. is probably from the Westie side or the poodle. Um, so to me, it was very spot on, plus as well as his weight and size was a correct prediction.
It's so interesting Crazy. because I know a lot of shelters get these questions all the time. Well, what kind of dog is he or she or how big will this dog get? Right. And they really don't know, right? right. I mean, they, they make an educated guess, but truly the only way of knowing is by doing one of these Correct. DNA tests. And again, it may not be perfect, but it sure gets us a lot closer to the mark than we would be just by guessing. You know, for him, I would probably still guess more blend of the Maltese yeah. based on his personality. So it definitely just goes to show now we know a little bit more about the breeds that make him up and so we also can understand other than personality traits and his size which would be important when he were adopted um, and especially if you're gonna have an apartment type puppy or whether you not have a big yard or a play area you want to make sure you have the right house and environment for them but for him too we also know more about genetic tendencies the test screens for over 150 inherited disease conditions and for him he picked up as one gene positive for what's called degenerative myelopathy um, since he does not have two he's not going to get it which is also an important Important factor. That's great news. But he was cleared for the other 149 plus. Wow. So from there, we can also rest assured that his tests have relieved some concerns and kind of alleviate things that potentially would be common in some of those breeds that could pop up, such as eye conditions or other things associated with poodles and things. Right. Yeah. Wow, that's so fascinating that's so to get the whole health screening yeah. and to, to just really understand. So now what do we say? Well, he's 25% Chihuahua. You like <laughs> yes. run down his when they ask what he's he is. A he's a Poochie. He's a Poochie all together. Yeah. Love it. That's so awesome. Great to see you, Dr. Hennessy. Again, Thank the you. kit is called Wisdom Panel, and you can get 20 bucks off right now. There's the info right there on your screen on our website, HoustonLife.tv, if you'd like to learn more. Thanks awesome. so much for Thank being here. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Poochie and I will see you back here in just a minute. <laughs> Bye, Poochie. Day, February 13th. The most prolific contemporary artist in the Houston art scene today proves it's never too late to follow your dreams. Of course it is never too late. And in honor of Black History Month, we are celebrating the work of artist Romeo Robinson. I've always had a deep-seated love of art, uh, both appreciative of it, uh, you know, by going to museums and galleries, etc. When I was getting close to retirement and decided what I wanted to do with the rest of my life, so to speak, I decided I wanted to see if uh, I could paint. I started painting uh, probably when I was 62. Uh, it was when I started training to be an artist. and. Um, been doing it ever since. I love it. <laughs> and I love the methodology. I love putting paint to canvas. I love trying to solve the problems that that presents. And where I put it is different each time, just depending on how I feel at the time and what I think it looks like. The subjects that I'm interested in now, as an older gentleman, I like to look back. And I'm, con I'm looking at people that have maybe influenced how my thinking has evolved over the years. I like to, to portray uh, African-American figures and people of color because that's not something we see a lot of in museums, in exhibitions, in galleries. Uh, it's more of it today, but when you look at uh, all the museums, you very seldom see uh, people of color in it. So I try to do that, I want to do that. I also want to talk about the human uh, condition, both the good and the bad. And I do believe eyes are the window to the soul, and I want one to see that. People will ask me, what did you mean by doing this painting? My answer usually is, what do you see in it? And that's what I want. I want you to be able to relate to it. In my way of looking at things, I'm probably never done with a piece. I just get it to a point that maybe can be appreciated on some level. This is a picture I did of Jesse Lott, who along with Rick Lowe uh, helped to start uh, Project Row Houses. And uh, he's, a, he's a noted sculptor here in Houston himself and uh, does beautiful work. And uh, I just thought that several of the artists that helped build the Houston art community needed some recognition. So I've done one of Burt Long, who's another recognized artist here in Houston. And I want to do some others as well. Uh, Black History Month in particular makes me look in retrospect uh, uh, about how far we've come, our accomplishments, the fact that we're still here, we're still growing, still still shining, and, and I like the fact that there's recognition there. 
Very nice. And if you'd like to see Romeo's art, you can head on over to the African American Artist Exhibition happening now through March 21st at the University of Houston Clear Lake Art Gallery. Admission is free and for more information call 281-283-2060 or visit HoustonLife.tv. And as we go to break, head on over to our Facebook page for a big Rodeo Houston announcement. Lauren Kelly will go live on our page as they reveal the last entertainer to round out this year's lineup. So you don't want to miss that coming up very soon. But first, the classic tale of Don Quixote is back on stage with a Texas twist. A preview of the Alley Theater's Quixote Nuevo is next. Positions. Well, the classic tale of Don Quixote of La Mancha is getting a modern update with a Texas twist. It's called Quixote Nuevo, and it's playing right now at the Alley Theater. One of the stars of the show, actor Ivan Hasso, is with us now. The staging looks really, really cool. Ivan, welcome to Houston Life. Hi. And I understand you play two different characters. This is a very common thing, right, where actors will double up or triple up sometimes. Yes, yes. Uh, I play two characters, uh, uh, Bruno and Young Quijano. And I also play a few other characters. Um, a lot of our cast have multiple roles in the show. Um, it's a very um, ensemble, uh, heavy show, so we all kind of contribute a lot to the, to the production. Keeps you on your toes, right? Exactly. Don Quixote is a story that many people might be familiar with. What's it like to take a show like that that's such a classic, but update it for today. I mean, what do you what do you mean by this modern twist on the show? What can audiences expect? Uh, audience can expect um a very relatable show. Uh, the uh, the playwright Octavio Solis, uh, you know, he he took it and and made the show kind of his own. He took the, the classic story and and set it in a uh, in a Tejano setting, a, a, a Texas town um, uh, along the border. So I feel like, especially for Texans, for Tejanos, I feel like there it is a very relatable show. There's a lot of themes in it that and a lot of language that's used that I think can. Um, will will uh, be nostalgic for a lot of folks. For a lot of Texans, right? And by the way, the gentleman on the right side of your screen we just saw, Emilio Delgado, if he looks familiar to many of you, that's because he portrayed Luis on Sesame Street for 40 years. That's got to be pretty cool to work with Emilio. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Um, it's been such a treat, such a joy to work with, with Emilio. He's... He's a very he's a very kind and, and he has a wonderful soul and he's very giving um, on stage as an actor and uh, to be able to work and interact with him um, you know, after pretty much growing up watching him on TV. So you did grow up watching Sesame Street. Oh yes, I did. Yes, okay. I did, and I, and I remember him. And um, it's been it's been an honor and uh, watching him work. He's such a master in his craft. So you know. Uh, you, you getting th those kind of opportunities to watch someone um, excel in, in their craft that way uh, and learn from them is, is just a magnificent thing to experience. I'm sure. You are born and raised in Dallas, Texas, right? Correct. At what point in your career, I know we were chatting a bit during our mm -hmm. short commercial break, but there was a defining moment for you when you realized that pursuing a career in the arts was what you wanted to dedicate your life to. Describe that moment to us. Okay, so uh, there was a moment in um, in my middle school uh, where uh, I was a part of a production uh, that uh, I was playing a couple of roles, and there was a specific moment that I remember that I went off stage. There were back-to-back -back scenes, and I ran off stage. And every night we would there would be people helping me change. We were doing a big, quick change, you know, changing costumes. And there was one night where I remember specifically. Uh, realizing and verbalizing to the folks around me like man this is so much fun I want to do this more I want to do this when I grow up and so it was it was a uh this is a very specific memory of mine. And was it the adrenaline rush of so much happening at one time that added pressure that was, you know, the reason that drew you in? It was a, it was a combination of different things. Um, it was uh, it was the adrenaline r rush of, of of running off and doing this quickly and trying to make it on time. There was also the. Uh, the experience of feeling the energy from the audience and um, knowing that I just did this scene and told this story and now I'm about to go and, and tell another part of this story. And so it was just a combination of, 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 of all of that, you know, there was just an exhilaration about it. I think we have some video of you in the show we're talking about today, Quixote Nuevo at the Alley Theater. Talk to us a little bit about some of your favorite parts of playing the roles that you are playing in this show. 
favorite parts about it. Um, it it's it's very fun to dive into uh, these characters that um, I feel like I can relate to or have aspects of uh, folks or relatives that I that I grew up with um, and speak in in you know the vernacular that uh, I was accustomed to hearing growing up. Um, one of one of the characters that I play, uh, uh, Bruno, who's a bartender at a, a Rosario's Lounge in Karaoke, where uh, Quixote stumbles upon, and um, wants us to dub him a knight. And so there's this great scene where um, we we take we 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 do this whole scenario where we kind of like play along, and we we knight him. We officially knight Don Quixote of La Plancha, Texas, and. Um, and uh, that's just such a fun thing to do every night. It's so great seeing this video, by the way, of the staging. It looks absolutely mm -hmm. beautiful. One of the things I love about the Alley Theater, and I know this show is going up the Hubbard Theater at the Alley. That's right. Any seat in the house is like having a front row seat. And I think because of the caliber of actors on the stage, yourself included, it's so nice to be an audience member and feel like you are part of the show and folks one of the best parts of all is ticket start at only twenty eight dollars right so mm -hmm. let's put up the info on the screen as we mentioned the show is open now quixote nuevo open until february 9th again those tickets start at just twenty eight bucks and you can learn more information by visiting their website alleytheater.org or by calling 713-220-5700 i think we got all the info out there, but Ivan Hasso, thank you so much for stopping by. It's great to meet you. Thanks for having me. Well, we're glad to have you in a show back here on your home Texas turf. So yeah, that's, yes, welcome back home. We can't wait to see the show. Thank you. I hope everyone goes out to see it, and it's 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 a fantastic show. So you you won't you won't uh, regret it. Okay, very nice, Ivan. Thanks so much. Houston right. Life will be right back. Well, if the struggle to stay on top of your weight loss resolution is real, well, there's good news. A local company promises to help you lose the extra pounds fast. Here with all the details is CEO of Innovative Lasers of Houston, Laura Alexis, along with patient Sylvia Castillo, who has lost, listen to this, 30 pounds of body fat in 10 weeks. Congratulations and welcome, ladies. Great to see you. Thank you for having us. Let me start with Sylvia, first of all. And I, unbelievable, you've lost over 30 pounds of bo body fat in 10 weeks. What made you call? Where, where were you in your weight loss journey? Well, I was on my lowest because um, um, I have a back problem, so um, I couldn't do a lot of things, you know, or even working, it was hard for me. So I have um, taken the number down a previous year before when I a watched. A year ago? Yeah, I was watching actually one of your shows, and I wrote it down, and I never called. So, and then again, I found myself watching again TV. And I, I took the number down again, and so after that week I called, and that's how I, how I got it. It's incredible that you kept the number for a year. It's yeah. really interesting. Um, Y'all, these are the before and after photos. Sylvia, look at yourself on the screen there. Unbelievable. I mean, what do you think about your transformation? Um, I see myself and it's still kind of hard to believe that I've lost so much weight. And you say that you've tried a lot of weight loss programs over the years. And, um, and what's been your story? Um, I did. I mean, it was just a yo-yo all the time, struggling. I will start a week and then I will continue. And then I didn't see results at all. So. Um, it was, it was very hard. Right. And yeah. I think so many people, Sylvia, can relate to you as far as saying yo-yo dieting yeah. over the years. And Laura, you probably hear that as well when people come in and they say, help me because I've tried everything and nothing's working. Oh, absolutely. I hear it every day. And what's great is that you meet with all of your clients, uh, no matter what location they are going to, you sit them down and really talk to them about their goals, right? That's right. We listen to the patient's goals and target areas, and based on that, we determine um, how many sessions to prescribe to them, and um, we put them in a plan specifically right for them. Okay, well, this is what it looks like when you walk into Innovate Lasers of Houston. And Laura, let's talk about this process because everybody says, okay, you know, when we hear about weight loss and dramatic weight loss, like Sylvia's gone through, how does it work? What are we doing? The difference uh, in our company and others is that the results are immediate. So how Sylvia's uh, journey in the past was not successful because she didn't get motivated. She didn't see the results right away. So patients get discouraged and end up eating whatever they want to eat and continue gaining weight. 
what we do is um, we plant the seed and we tell the patients, look, not only are we going to use the laser, but there's a nutrition plan that's going to come along with it. It's a life changing procedure. So you're really talking about a lifestyle, right? lifestyle change, and that's where that shift comes in. Now, we did see this machine that you place over the body, and this is basically the Zorona laser. What is that? The Zorona laser is FDA approved, and what it does, it stimulates the collagen, the skin retracts. At the same time, it creates tiny microscopic tears into the fat cells. When that happens, the content of the fat cell naturally seep out through bodily fluids such as urine and sweat, and the patient shrinks. So what you're seeing is an animation of a microscopic image of the fat cell. At zero minutes, the fat cell is plump. Before a 20-minute session is done, as you, as you can see at the very bottom, the fat cell has already collapsed. So all you're left with is just the shell. And that's what you're saying is that there's no pain, there's no downtime. Sylvia, did you feel anything during your sessions? Nothing at all. While I was getting the sessions done, I was either on my phone or, you know, watching the program. Right, just relaxing, Netflixing yeah. or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is the difference between you, Innovative Lasers, Laura, and the other clinics that are out there? That the results are immediate. And that is motivating. Uh, we treat each and every patient like a person not like a herd of cattle. Here, come on, everybody does the same thing. No, it's not like that. What works for you is not gonna work for your friend, for example. So and it's a customized program. Right, and we see here some of the before and after uh, photos of clients that have come through Innovative Lasers of Houston, including you yourself, Laura. So you were a client before actually you became an owner. That's right, and this is why I'm so passionate about it, because if it worked for me, it'll work for anybody. Well, let's talk about the special offer, like what Sylvia heard a year ago, right? She, she kept that number, and what's the special offer you'd like to share with our viewers? Typically, our transformation package is $2,400. However, for viewers now, it's half off, and if you're one of the first 100 callers, we'll even throw in an additional three sessions for free. And that's what you need to do. Again, you can call. The number is there on the screen, 281-888-3094 to get in on the special offer. And simply, you can also do this online to schedule that free consultation. And that's at InnovativeLasersOfHouston.com. And Sylvia, here's your last soapbox. You're feeling great now after losing the weight. And where are you in your journey? So have a little bit more to go, or are you, are you good? No, I'm good where I am. You I'm look just great. trying to get better. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you look wonderful. Thank you. Laura, thanks so much for coming in. Do appreciate it. And Sylvia, thanks for sharing your story. Do appreciate that as well. And stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Did you know that every year in the U.S. about 40,000 babies are born with a congenital heart defect? That was the diagnosis for one local family. You're about to meet them. Their son, Kaysen, who's now five years old, with, was born with half a heart and has gone through multiple life-saving procedures at Children's Memorial Hermann Hospital. And here to share Kaysen's story is pediatric heart surgeon, Dr. Jorge Salazar, along with Carson's parents, Savannah and David Cox. Hi, guys. Thanks so much for coming Hi. in. Thank you for having us. Having us. Kind of cool case and to see yourself on TV, huh? Pretty cool. I love it. Um, doctor, before we get into the full story, yes. let's talk about the Children's Heart Center because it's really amazing. Kids come from all over the world for this center. They really do. There's a, it turns out that one out of every hundred children is born with a heart defect. It's hard to imagine, and we specialize in taking care of the most complex heart defects with a great success rate. And so people come from all over the world to get that care from us. It's interesting that it's so, it's so common. I think that would surprise a lot of folks. Some of these issues, as the mm -hmm. child grows, may solve themselves, but others require pretty intense treatment. So talk us through sure. these scenarios, because every case is different, right? Well, part of the reason why none of us really realized that there were so many heart defects is because not that many years ago, a lot of those kids passed away. Mm -hmm. And you hear about you know, infant mortality rate and sudden infant death and you know, scary things to talk about, but it's true. One out of 100 kids that were born, many of those kids unfortunately used to die. But now, because of the advanced offerings that we have and the advanced team that we have, we can actually save over 98% of those children. So you can imagine that we spring out of bed every day to be able to help so many kids like Kaysen. Yeah. And then for kids in particular like Kaysen who were born with what's considered to be half a heart, they used to be destined to have a limited life in terms of lifespan and even quality of life. A lot of them would either pass away or have a heart transplant. So what we're doing now is we're actually reconstructing the entire heart instead of to have it be half a heart with a limited life in future, we actually give the children and parents a normal heart. 
It's really it's incredible. Exciting. I mean, hearing all these stories, and of course, case by case is different, but when we're speaking about uh, Kaysen's story, and I know mom and dad, you're here, and, and in your case, I believe you got word in utero, right, while you were pregnant, and s scary in enough whenever you learn this mm -hmm. uh, information, but take us back to that moment oh when, yeah. you, when you heard about this. Yeah, it was one of the worst moments of my life, yeah. hearing that, and um, they did tell us we, he was going to have three surgeries, and... Um, a heart transplant. So that's the road we were prepared for. And then um, until we met Dr. Salazar. Yeah, this was at 20 weeks when you discovered oh, obviously look at we're his some newborn photos. <laughs> so Amazing. And Kaysen's last operation was when he was four years old? Um, actually, was he five? He was four. Oh, four, okay. Yes, yes, he was four. And how is he doing today? Oh, he's doing amazing. I mean, it's night and day. And before these surgeries we had with Dr. Salazar, he couldn't even get up the stairs without being out of breath. It was really sad to watch, but now he's just a whole new kid. He's full of energy and does not stop. Hmm. Definitely making up for the past five years. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No doubt. <laughs> and so uh, you were looking at a potential heart transplant mm -hmm. at this point, and, and he doesn't need to go through that anymore. Doesn't need to be on that list, right, doctor? Well, normal is a big word, but yeah. Kaysen has a normal heart. <laughs> and That's normal awesome. means for life. So we're thrilled. You know, I'm, I'm a dad. I love my children desperately. I know you love him mm -hmm. desperately. And I could tell that about you guys <laughs> the first second I met you. So if we can give the gift of a normal life to a beautiful child and beautiful parents, I mean, there's nothing better than that. It's deeply personal for me and my team. Yeah, it's huge. And the, the normal heart doctor you just described, you call it a biventricular repair and conversion program. Can you explain what that is? Sure. So um, most of us are born with four chambers of the heart two ventricles or pumps and two collecting chambers. So the univentricular or single ventricle half a heart kids are given these operations that you heard about. So what we do is we reconstruct the ventricles and actually get them to grow so that the small ventricle actually can grow up and be big enough to support circulation to the body and that way you can have a normal heart with four chambers and two pumps. So it would be a biventricular conversion program or I kind of like calling it the whole heart program or the normal heart program. Right. Yeah. Okay, let's hear from Kaysen. Hey bud, okay, you're five. You heard this whole story of all of us talking to you about what's going on. What do you like to do most? You like to run, jump, baseball? What is it? I like to play and jump. Play and <laughs> jump. And it looks like you're a big brother these days, huh? What's it like to be a big brother? Let's take care of babies. <laughs> take care of baby. I bet you're very helpful he doing is. that. He is. And this really is incredible, Savannah and David. Looking at your beautiful family here <laughs> on the you. screen now, I know, Savannah, you described it was just a terrible feeling when you got this news mm -hmm. when Kaysen was in utero. But look at you now, and, and part of the reason you are here, I mean, the reason you are here is because of Dr. Salazar yeah. and his team. We owe our life to him. He's, mm -hmm. he's been amazing to us and to Kaysen. He's given us a whole new life and a whole new perspective on life since he's had his surgeries and it's just he's he's been fantastic never better so well cheers to a whole heart <laughs> and Absolutely. to a long happy life thanks to you all for being here thank today you. come back and see us so anytime much. thank thanks. you and in the meantime if you would like more information you can visit children's.memorialherman.org or you can pick up the phone and call 713-500-5746 and we'll be right back <laughs> Are you tired of dealing with under eye bags and wrinkles on your face? Plexiderm is tackling those pesky problems with a 10 minute challenge. Here's some of the reactions from people after they've used Plexiderm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Wow, is that really me? <laughs> <laughs> it's a facelift in a jar. <laughs> Facelift in a jar. I love that. Lifestyle expert Melinda McKenzie is here to explain how Plexiderm works and almost feels like, I mean, it works. Why do we have to explain it? I know, right? <laughs> because people can't believe it. It's so exciting. And I will say, uh, I'll be 59 in January and I get it. No. I use it every I have it on now. I, I forgot to look in the mirror, make sure I'm not 
cracking or anything, but basically I put it on every day because I still look like me, but I look fresher. I've gotten rid of those tiny little things that bother me in particular. Absolutely. We all, you know, we are our worst critics, as we say. We look in the mirror and we think, oh, I wish it was a little yes. tighter, higher, but we can do that in the jar. And this 10 minute challenge is basically there for people to say, you know, I've heard you talk about it. I've seen this, but yeah. does it work? And you're saying, try the 10 minute challenge. Exactly. I love that. Thank you so much. Yes, we want people to try it because people ask me all day long, come on, Melinda. So that sometimes in public, I'll have to wipe my face off and go, look, it really <laughs> works. I promise you. Because basically all you're doing is put on clean, dry skin anywhere you have an issue. And just like they're showing with Georgine here, I love the time lapse because you're showing how quickly it works, what it really does, and how you're just holding still. You, you need to hold still for 10 minutes, and I'll tell you why. It'll last up to 10 hours. Now, you'll see results in two to three. Really let it set for 10 so you can have that 10 hour usage. You just have to relax. You don't have to. People will ask me, can I, do I prep my skin? Do I pull it? No. Put it on there, let Plexiderm do its thing. The reason you want to relax is you don't want to crack it. Okay. And then you're good to go for 10 hours. And basically let that, just kind of go get your coffee or yes, maybe that's your time to reflect, yes. sit down, watch the headlines or something like that. And right. you always say, Melinda, a little goes a long way when it comes to Plexiderm. Thank you. We have a tendency to want to use more because yeah. we get very excited. Half of a pea size in any particular area. A little dabble do ya. I'll say that all day long because really you should never see your Plexiderm. If you get excited and put too much on and you see any, that means you have too much, no big deal. Just dab it, wet it, get rid of it and leave the rest on. There. And by the way, this product is perfectly fine for all the men in our lives. I they want to look good and yes. smooth and tight too. Yeah, the men, we have found that the men have been taking it from the women because they're like, wait, hold on a <laughs> second here. And the men are mostly using it. We have found under the eyes, number one, forehead, number two. That okay. seems to be a thing that happens. But because you don't have to read a manual, it's not a three-part process. And Richie here, he's had those bags for over 20 years. Bags, what are you going to do about them? They're three-dimensional. They stick out. You can't put moisturizer or makeup. It's not going to change. With this, it creates a nice beautiful shield so they're gone for the day. Absolutely and you don't have to wait a couple of days. Ten minutes is yes. the longest time that it takes to react and I want to just yes. see because we said a little dabble do yes. ya, a just a little bit on there. It's, it's basically white. colorless Yes. and you just rub it in. It's a gel form and it already starts to That's it. do the magic and the work. So that means no matter what your tone, type, texture, oily, dry skin, it's all going to go on clear then you relax and as you can see your skin still looks like your skin. That's the yeah. most important thing. But and there is a difference. Those hands, it's kind of crazy. It really is. In a matter of 30 seconds, it really <laughs> is crazy. And it immediately goes right into the skin. Melinda, any studies been done on Plexiderm? Yes, thank you. They actually did some clinical studies because this took off so quickly. So they did some clinical studies last February. And what they found was with Plexiderm, underneath the eyes, they had over 80% reduction. Okay. Forehead, it was higher, 85, because you don't move your forehead as much. And around the mouth, it's about 75% reduction around the mouth. What happens at the end of the day? Because clearly we're going to put makeup on, right? Yes. So we can put this, makeup can go on top of this once it's dried. Yes, uh, water-based. You don't want to use anything oil-based. Okay. Oil will break it down, but yes. And I tell people, if you, I wear a lot of makeup and I like my makeup, but re-look at your face after you use your Plexiderm. I found I'm not using my concealer As because much. it's created my own solution, which is, hey, I don't have that problem anymore. So take a look and see because it'll re rethink the way you put on your cosmetics. Okay. And then just a simple wash cleansing of the face yes, in the evening. Yes. Again. And like I said, your face isn't going to crack in the middle of the day. What basically happens is it'll start to soften and, and that's really it. But you wash it off. I tell people it's a beauty boost for the day. This does not fix your skin over time. It's like wearing makeup or fixing your hair. It's just a daily beauty boost. All right. Well, let's get in on the special offer because yeah. I know everybody's talking about the 10 minute challenge. Just do it. <laughs> Try the offer, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's very exciting. And we would love to hear your stories, send in your pictures because we hear stories every single day of Thank you, you've changed my life. I don't have to go to a doctor's office. Absolutely, and you're gonna save a lot of time and no downtime. You're just putting this on, you're drinking your coffee, you're having a moment, and you're using less makeup, people. And <laughs> get one for you and get one for that man in your life Absolutely. if you have one. If not, buy two for yourself. <laughs> to get in on this special offer, all you need to do is call 1-800-923-7063 or just simply visit Plexiderm.com. Melinda, always great to see you. Thanks so much. Thanks for sharing your secrets. Oh yeah. we will be right back. I approve this message.
Well, it's time for our Cool Schools Weekly Spotlight, brought to you by Go Public Gulf Coast. Today, we are featuring Columbia Brazoria ISD for its innovative way of keeping the community informed. Students of Columbia High School distribute a monthly publication called Paint It Maroon. Their stories highlight positive happenings across the district, including exemplary teachers and exciting events. The publication is student-initiated, developed, and produced. The program empowers students to serve in a public relations capacity for uh, Columbia Brazoria ISD. And if you would like to learn more about Houston area public school districts, just visit GoPublicGulfCoast.com. And hopefully you guys were following around. Lauren Kelly has been live on our Houston Life Facebook page. Have you heard the announcement? Chance the Rapper is coming to the Houston Rodeo on March 6th. I am so excited. This is a huge deal. All the announcements today were major. Yeah, but Courtney's especially excited about Chance the Rapper. In fact, when she found out, we all had to plug our ears in Studio B. <laughs> there was like serious screaming there going on There was some in squealing here. happening. You're such a big fan, I huh? love him. Yes, I love him. Okay, well, add him to the list with Lizzo and Marshmallow. Marshmallow. Very nice. Also, coming up on tomorrow's Houston Life, from the big screen, Jaime Camille, Sandra Echeverria, promoting their brand new movie called My Boyfriend's Meds. It's a romantic comedy, release date later this month. And folks... It's funny. Yeah, you're going to love this film. And uh, if you watch Jane the Virgin, you probably recognize Jaime from that distinguished career. He also starred in a lot of novelas yes, back in the day. Yes, absolutely. And tomorrow is Workout Wednesday. Lauren Kelly is going to get ready for her cheer tryout. Yes, you heard me. Cheer tryout. Watch her hit the mat at a local gym, All Star Revolution. If you're watching Cheer on Netflix, then you know what I'm talking about. That's Lexi's gym. We did watch Cheer on Netflix. Amazing. Well, we watched one episode. Oh, it's so good. Uh, BT Dubs, the secret is out. Tex, the multi poo, no more. He's a he's, poochie. He's a poochie. Mm hmm. He's right there. And he has a little bit of Westie in him. So it was 25% Chihuahua. Yeah, I don't know. He's a poochie. He's a poochie. <laughs> and head over to my Facebook page and find out about the Kendra Scott event coming up on Thursday evening. Wave, Texie. Wave. Bye. See you tomorrow.